Hi there, my name is Alan Lamont. I'm going to bring a message right now about the rapture. And before I explain the roots of it, I want to explain what's happening presently. You know, I want to just explain what's happening today. You have the series called Left Behind by Reverend Tim LaHaye, which is, you know, a great deception, really. I mean, Tim LaHaye is a high-level 33rd degree Templar Mason. You see his crown on the cross or Raleigh's material, really. And Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins, you know, they have, you know, really brought out this uh, futurism to the church worldwide, you know. And they've really jumped onto this uh, Jesuit Bible prophecy bandwagon, you know. Uh, and made millions upon millions through their material, you know. Uh, and really, they've created a publishing empire through this, really. But these men are really, you know, Jesuits, okay. They really are. I'm not saying high Jesuits, I'm not saying, you know, of the fourth vow, but they are professed Jesuits, without a doubt. This is nothing more than Christian fiction. I do believe in a rapture, but I do believe, according to the Bible, it will come at the day of Christ, the day of the Lord, and we will then go to meet the Lord in the clouds, okay? Not the beginning of the Great Tribulation to escape the seven-year reign of Antichrist and Great Tribulation. Okay, moving on. Now really, the whole teaching of the rapture really came into prominence into the Christian world, as in the sense that it was spread to millions of people through a man called Hal Lindsey. And you will know Hal Lindsey through his famous book, The Late Great Planet Earth. During the 70s, 80s and early 90s, he sold over 35 million copies. And most uh, pastors... Bible college lecturers uh, and most people on the Christian satellite television networks all base their theology on Mr. Hal Lindsey, you know, his uh, pre-tribulation rapture theory. Now, what's not known about Hal Lindsey, this is very hush-hush, it's, it's very secret, is that Hal Lindsey is actually a Jesuit in disguise. That's right. Two of his daughters attended Jesuit Gonzaga University, that's G-O-N-Z-A-G-A, -A -A. that's Jesuit Gonzaga University, you know. He himself attended a Jesuit university. This man's a Jesuit. Now the whole theology of uh, the rapture theory brought about by men like Mr. Hal Lindsay, who were, you know, Jesuit coadjutors, Jesuit agents, planted into the Protestant charismatic Pentecostal churches, is to really take the attention away from Rome. Now let me talk about the roots of this. First of all, the definition of the word Jesuitism or Jesuit. If you look in a modern dictionary, you won't really find any <laughs> great revelation because they've been suppressed and rewritten and, uh, you know, <laughs> they're owned by the Jesuits. That's it. But if you look at a uh, old dictionary, Noah's Webster's Dictionary of 1828, this is what it says about the Jesuits, listen, cunning, deceitful, hypocritical, deceptive practices to affect a purpose, deceptive practices to affect a purpose, also, you know, the arts and principles and practices of the Jesuits is deceptive practices, now, let me talk about what the Bible teaches about the the rapture. <coughs> okay, sorry. For there is one. There is a rapture. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 1 to 12. Quote, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by a gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, what Paul is teaching here is that the day of Christ is the day when Christ returns to the earth. 
and then we're gathered together to meet him but that can only happen when there's a falling away first now the falling away is really it's Christians it's the Christian church that falls away from apostolic truth or falls away from the teaching of the apostolic faith okay they will fall away and then the man of sin will be revealed the son of perdition Paul's teaching here that the man of sin will be revealed and he will come out of a church that's fallen away from apostolic truth people don't get that they don't get it they don't see it next thing he says is who opposes and exalts himself above all that's called God or that is worshipped so that he is God sits in the temple of God showing himself that he is God now this is the mystery of iniquity the mystery of iniquity is that it will work through a church that is turned away from apostolic truth and the man of sin will sit in a temple in that church that's fallen away from apostolic truth showing himself that he's God and exalting himself above all that is called God okay this is what the protestants believe let me bring a quotation from Martin Luther it's actually from Luther's works volume 2 page 281 quote O Christ my Lord, look down upon us and bring upon us the day of judgment and destroy the brood of Satan at Rome. For at Rome there sits that man of whom the Apostle Paul wrote that he would oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God, the man of sin, the son of perdition. What is the temple of God? Is it stones and wood? Did not Paul say the temple of God is holy, which temple you are? To sit what is it but to reign to teach and to judge who from the beginning of the church has dared to call himself master of the whole church who is it but the Pope alone wow that's a powerful quotation there <coughs> sorry let's get a drink of water okay here you have Martin Luther clearly identifying the Pope of Rome as that man of sin why is this changed today? Why doesn't the Church of Jesus Christ all across the earth know that the Antichrist is not just one man that will appear? It's a, you know, succession of Antichrists. Why can't they see that? I'll explain why. Now this is the real foundation of the pre-tribulation rapture theory. And I'm going to explain the agenda behind it. Okay. It was actually created by two Jesuits of Rome and was invented as a part of the Counter-Reformation as a counter-interpretation called Futurism. These two Jesuits were named Francisco de Ribera and Robert Balamine. They invented the system called Futurism. Francisco de Ribera uh, was the superior general from 1537 to 1591 and also uh, Cardinal Robert Balamine from 1542 to 1621 these were Jesuits high Jesuits and they brought into the church this theology okay and what they're really teaching through this pre-tribulation rapture is that uh, Christians will be taken from the earth before the Antichrist is revealed. That's important. That's the real agenda. Christians will be taken from the earth to meet the Lord in the clouds before the Antichrist will be revealed. Otherwise known as the catching away of the saints, okay? This is a hoax. It's a lie. It's a fantasy. But this is taught by millions and millions of Christians all across the earth and thousands upon thousands of churches by pastors all over the earth and it's a foundation of a multi-dollar industry and movie empire you know <laughs> but let me tell you what the Jesuits are teaching through futurism number one the Antichrist will be one man not a dynasty not a succession of Antichrist sitting in a temple but one man who will only be known when he enters the third Jewish temple and causes the sacrifices and oblations to cease according to Daniel chapter 9 in the Old Testament. That's the only way we can identify him. Second, he will be an atheist or an infidel. Okay? 
So he will not come out of a church and he will not sit in a temple or a church which has fallen from apostolic truth. Third, he will only be revealed during the tribulation. Four, he will sit in a rebuilt temple in Jerusalem and make a covenant with the Jews. Five, he will call himself God, etc., etc. Six, that Christians are actually hindering his appearance. But when the Christians are caught up at the beginning of the tribulation or raptured to heaven before his appearance, this will bring forth the Antichrist and then he will appear. This is blindness. The church of Jesus Christ all across the earth today is in the dark regarding the true revelation of the return of the Lord. And I will say again that Hal Lindsay, the father of modern Bible prophecy, is a Jesuit of the third vower. He's a coadjutor, working for the Society of Jesus. He is a Jesuit. As I've said, his two daughters attended Jesuit Gonzaga University. This is a very powerful university of the Jesuit order. They're alumni, as he is. Now, there's a mysterious woman also called C.C. Carlson, who was the ghostwriter or, you know, co-writer of Lindsay's book, The Late Great Planet Earth, you know, where he brought this teaching of the rapture to the church, you know, to millions, you know. And it turns out that she is actually a nun, <laughs> you know. She's a Catholic, you know. Uh, that's not revealed either. Let me bring a conclusion. Okay. According to the word of God, the day of Christ is an event that will happen at the end of the Great Tribulation, otherwise known in Scripture as the Day of the Lord, otherwise known as the Second Advent. It's the day when Christ comes from his throne, when the Archangel blows the trumpet, and he comes with all the armies of heaven, and he comes to stand upon the Mount of Olives, east of Jerusalem. He does not come seven years before that. He does not come to the clouds to take his church into heaven for seven years to escape the great tribulation therefore the church cannot know the antichrist because he will only be revealed three and a half years into it at the third Jewish temple the jesuits the society of jesus brought this doctrine of futurism and pre-trib rapture into the church so that the church of jesus christ would not follow in the traditions of the reformers like huss and wycliffe and calvin and john wesley and john knox you know all of these reformers, these pioneers, these roaring reformers, these mighty men of God, they all knew that Rome was the seat of Antichrist, that the Pope of Rome exalts himself above God, and that he has replaced Christ as head of the church. They knew that. They knew it. So the Jesuits had to bring in a theology. Now you see the agenda? The two most sinister points of this theology is this. The first thing is this. We will escape the Great Tribulation so we will not see the Antichrist because the Christians are restraining him. Once the Christians go to heaven for seven years, he is no longer restrained so the Antichrist can then be revealed. But he will not come from an apostate church. Okay? He will be an atheist, he will be against God, etc, etc, etc. Because he will exalt himself above all that is called God is worshipped. I think I've shared a lot on that. I think it's time to bring a conclusion and close now. I used to believe this myself until I started researching the the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits, looking at their suppressed history and this rapture, uh, pre-tribulation rapture, as in that we will be taken to heaven for seven years and not know the Antichrist, is a lie created by Rome, created by Rome, because they do not want the papacy being exposed as the seat of Antichrist. They're terrified of that. And that's what all the reformers done. They didn't just come out of the Babylonian system of Rome. No, no, no. They actually exposed that the popes were the Antichrists and they were going to bring forth the Antichrist. Don't believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. It's a fantasy. It's a fairy tale for grown-ups created by the Jesuits. My name is Alan Lamont. Thanks for listening. As always, all roads lead to Rome.